Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review is brought to you in part by Rogers Hobby Center in Saginaw, Michigan, where the fun begins. This review covers the Mercury Capsule and Atlas Booster. It's a 1 110 scale kit from Atlantis, number H1833. In 1962, John Glenn became the first American to orbit the Earth. An Atlas rocket propelled the Mercury spacecraft into Earth orbit, and Glenn circled the Earth three times, and a flight that lasted almost five hours before the Friendship 7 spacecraft splashed down in the ocean. Most of the major systems worked smoothly, and the flight was considered a great success as an engineering feat. Now, these early flights led to the later lunar landings, and if you were around back then, you recall that this period of space exploration was one of the most thrilling achievements in American history. Now this kit was first released by Ravel in 1962 and has had multiple reboxings since then, including this 2019 release by Atlantis. The molds do have some age on them and they'll need a little extra cleanup, so this kit requires some modeling experience. Thanks to Atlantis for bringing it back this kit not only replicates the Atlas rocket and Mercury capsule, but also the entire launch pad, gantry, loading ramp, and some support vehicles. For a 1 110 scale kit, it's pretty big. When you're finished, it's 20 inches long, 12 and a half inches high, and 4 and a half inches wide. Oh, uh, I, that sounds like Newt, our program director. Uh, he's got a question. Come on in here, Newt. Won't that rocket melt the base when it takes off? Oh no, um, this one doesn't fly like the um, Estes model rockets. Uh, it's just for display. But that didn't keep our imaginations from flying high back in 1962, as we dreamed of space travel and taking vacations on the moon and Mars. Here is the contents of the kit. As you can see, there's quite a few pieces, 178, and you'll use them all. It's molded in light gray, and there's a lot of flash on some of the sprues and trees, so there's going to be some test fitting and cleanup involved. Now the decals are in pretty nice shape, and they've got good register, and the color is nice. Uh, they're pretty accurate. Now we'll be using mostly model master type liquid cement for uh, construction, sometimes uh, super glue for fragile parts. But remember to heed the manufacturer's use and safety guidelines when you see or hear any of the products in the review. Step one in the instructions have you paint the parts while they're on the sprue, but um, there was so much flash that needed to be cleaned up, I decided that I would paint the parts uh, later on after assembly and clean up. Get these parts out for the first um, of construction, which is steps two through eight and remove the parts from the sprue. This includes the uh, truck, the, the fuel tanker, the nitrogen tanker, the control center, and the rocket's trailer. Now I removed all the flash and imperfections from the part with a hobby knife and standing sticks. So first I assembled the truck, uh, the cab there, and it went together pretty nicely. There's only three pieces. Now I left the tires off until later, and next I put together the tanker. And there's a few more parts there, but it was still pretty easy. Uh, and I also left the tires and axles off of that. Now, uh, the nitrogen tank, uh, there was a lot of molding imperfections in the tank parts, uh, but with some sanding, it looked pretty nice. And it went together pretty well again, and uh, once again, left the t tires and the axles off. I also left off the tank base, as I wanted to paint that a different color. Now the two halves of the control center went together nicely, uh, with no problems, and after the glue had dried, I sanded the seam so it was ready for paint. The rocket trailer was a little more difficult. Uh, a lot of small parts there were difficult to place, and I used some slow setting cement so that I could manipulate the parts before they finally set up. Now I did not place the axles or the tires on the rocket trailer until after it was painted. And the reason is uh, I wanted to get those painted with an airbrush and then add the uh, tires and axles later. Using an airbrush, I painted the truck trailers and control center a kind of a school bus yellow, uh, which was a mix of Tamiya colors XF56 and XF3. I then brush painted the truck grill silver 
and painted the axles and nitrogen tag tank platform a flat black with a brush and also used a brush to paint the tires rubber black and the uh, rims were a medium gray. After the paint had dried, I placed the decals on the models and there were um, a very clearly marked instructions for that. Uh, by the way, they're at the end of this review. And then I used some setting solution to make sure they would set and coated them with uh, a little pledge floor gloss to seal them in. Finally, I placed the tires and the wheels on the trucks and trailers. And now locate the parts for the ramp and take them off the sprue. Those are 38 through 43. Remove the imperfections with a hobby knife and some sanding sticks and assemble the parts using some slow setting cement to allow you to maneuver the supports and rails before they dry. The next step say to place the decals uh, on the ramp, but I decided to paint the ramp along with some future parts so I left that uh, till later. And now we'll take the uh, platform, the guard rails and the wall parts uh, 45 and 50 through 52 and clean those up. And uh, I glued the rails, the guard rails onto the platform, but I couldn't tell from the instructions where to put the uh, platform onto the wall. So we'll have to uh, try fitment and, and find out where that goes later. And now with the uh, sidewall and support beams parts 48 and 49, I got them ready for assembly. Uh, but for the instructions, I still couldn't tell where to put the beam on the wall. Again, I set those aside, hoping uh, later uh, other parts would help show where that goes. The decals uh, shown in this step will be put on later too. And so here's where your test fitting will come in handy. I grabbed the base and the beams and removed the parts uh, from within the base and set them aside for later assembly. Still not knowing where all the parts went, I went ahead and removed the parts uh, for step 13. Uh, and the walls for more bracing and after I'd removed part numbers uh, 46, 53, 44, 47 and 54 I got them ready for assembly uh, and with some test fitting I found out where the wall and the platform go along with the beams and having the side walls tested uh, and in place really helps identify where the inner parts will go. So you can see where they go here, but that's how you'll determine where those are placed. Now I'll show you various views from different angles so you get a really good idea of placement on these. And after all of the previous test fitting, the walls actually went on pretty easily. And then I tried to take some uh, close-up photographs to help others, uh, you know, you as viewers with the part fitment here. Now the kit requires a lot of test fitting. And this was just the first uh, phase of that, but as you can see, um, once you get pieces in the right place, uh, it goes together pretty easily and it comes out nice and square. So just take your time uh, and when you get to the point where the sidewalls are available, then you can kind of see where the rest of the parts go. And after you get it done, uh, it's a pretty nice little representation. Uh, next we'll use these parts um, 60, 68, and 62 and then clean them up. But remember uh, there are some little nubs, some little bosses on the pipes that are actually nozzles or attachment points so don't remove those. I glued the pipes to the platform and then glued the little pipe extension to the end of the pipe. I then test fitted the platform and the pipes to the side of the building prior to gluing the parts in place. So get the parts out for the small platform and the two guardrails there, uh, that's parts 55 through 57. And clean up the seam lines and sprue tabs and then glue the uh, guardrails to the platform making sure they're perpendicular. So locate these two parts 58 and 59, that's the stairs and the pipes. Um, and you're going to clean those up and then place the platform from step 15 earlier uh, inside the building which was built in step 13. Now place the stairs, part number 58, in between the inner platform. Now that's the red arrow here. And uh, then you can uh, glue the pipes, uh, parts uh, 59, uh, on the outside of the building uh, in the holes that are provided there. So we'll find these um, brace parts here. And as you can see, there's quite a few um, uh, ejector pin marks on them if you want to clean those up along with some uh, parting lines. And then part 63, 64A, 65, and 61 uh, come off the sprues. And part 63 was mislabeled uh, as part 64. So I removed the imperfections from the parts, glued the braces onto the platform from step 14, and then uh, with some slow setting mat, uh, cement. And then I glued the uh, platform onto the building 
while the braces were still movable for ease of alignment. After that had dried, I set the stairs and the guardrails, uh, that's part 63 and 64A, between the platform and the base, gluing them into place there. Finally, I put the stairs in, uh, part 65, between the platform and the small inner platform from step 15. Remove the uh, I-beams, part 66, and the platform, number 71. The braces, uh, which are part 61, and the pipes are 72 and 72A. Remove the uh, seam lines and the sprue gates with a hobby knife and sanding sticks. And then, using slow setting uh, glue, glue the braces to the bottom of the platform. And then, while the glue is still, um, you know, pliable, you can uh, move those I-beams around to um, uh, align them. And after they had dried, I glued the pipes to the I-beams. There was a little bit of warpage, so I used some clamps to hold the parts in place while the glue dried. Now, get the parts out for this small platform. You can see the, the uh, base and the um, rails here. And then clean these up and get them ready for assembly. Now, test fit the platform uh, from step 18 onto the side of the building. And this will uh, help you figure out the placement of the small platform. Now glue the uh, platform from step 18 onto the building with the stairs and the small platform in between the building and the platform. And now remove these parts, um, the small uh, handrails and the ladder uh, and the steps there. Um, the rails part 63 and the stairs part 64, the ladder is 65. Clean those up and glue the stairs from the uh, step 18 uh, platform to the little platform and then in between the I-beams. Locate uh, parts 75, 6, and 7 and remove the seam lines and the sprue points from the blast shield parts. Now glue the two halves of the blast uh, shield together and then glue the water pipes on top of the blast shield. Now in step 22 you clean up the parts, uh, the latter parts here and the stairs you see uh, 99 through 102 and glue the three rails to the staircase. Now step 23 is yet another uh, staircase and platform. Uh, now gather up the parts that's 94 to 97 and 98 and remove the imperfections and glue the rails to the staircase and the landing there and then glue the stand underneath the platform. In step 24 we'll use parts 73 and 74 through 85 and take care of the seam lines and the sprue attachment points there and part number 85 was mislabeled on the instructions as part number 84. So glue the guardrails onto the launch platform and turn the platform over and glue part 73, uh, the I-beams, to the bottom of the launch platform. Now align the blast shield from number 21 uh, step and around the hole in the bottom of the launch platform and glue it into place. In step 25 you'll be using parts 87 through 93 and Clean those up and glue the walls of the shed together and glue the conduit part 91 to the side of the shed part 90. Now glue the conduit to the control panel 92 and 93 and then set these parts aside. I wanted to paint the garage before attaching the control panel and the conduit. I thought that now was a good time to paint some of these sub-assemblies and so the uh, ramp, the small building, the platform, the garage there and the stairs so I just mix my own paint color. Um, I use some Tamiya Dark Ghost Gray, that's F XF66, with a little flat black uh, to make it a little darker. And then I used my uh, airbrush to paint them all. After the paint had dried, it was time to put on some of the decals. And most of them are called out in the instructions, except that the, um, the red line decal, hard hats required, and the danger decals, uh, I use the box art for placement of those and they're not shown in the instructions. Now using the instructions and the box art, I also painted some XF7 red onto some of the pipes and XF2 white on the electrical conduit and the electrical box. Then I used some of my own yellow mixed paint, just a yellow color, for some of the pipes and braces and I used some XF16 flat aluminum to paint the garage, the guardrails, stairs, ladders, and platforms. At this point, I gave everything a coat of clear flat. In this next step, you'll need to do some test fitting, uh, just to make sure that everything goes together properly. Uh, if you've lined up all the walls and things in perpendicular uh, fashion, they should line up well. 
but test fit them and then glue the launch platform to the building and to the garage. Now I glued the stairs to the base up to the launch platform and then finally I glued the electrical conduit and the electrical box from the garage over to the main building. Next we'll uh, locate some of the parts from step 27. These are your um, elevator parts uh, number 106 through 110 and uh, we'll be using those in the next step, uh, part uh, step number 28. So parts 103, 4, and 5 are more of the missile elevator parts and I cleaned those up and then step uh, from step 27 I assembled those parts with some slow setting glue uh, with a glue looper uh, to let the um, uh, glue on some of the smaller parts with precision um, so that they, it wasn't a real mess. Now while the cement was still you know pliable I was able to align all the parts with good fitment and as you could see earlier some of those are very small pieces don't drop them. Uh, some of the parts uh, I had tried to paint while they were on the sprue but after cleaning them up I had to paint them again. In step 29 we continue with parts 111 through 114 to finish the missile elevator. Now clean those up and they're very small but they fit well. Um, after the parts have dried uh, take the uh, step 28 and 29 pieces and paint them with that uh, yellow color paint. In step 30 there's uh, numerous uh, parts that go on top of the platform here. 118 and 19, 121 and 123 along with 125 to 128. So clean those up from the sprue and I painted the work benches and the loudspeaker platform dark gray. Also I painted the fire hydrants red with a silver base and the barrels a flat dark blue. Now I also painted the loudspeakers and they were flat aluminum and glued all the parts onto the launch platform. Each part has a little hole for placement and were easily identified on the box art and instructions. Now we're going to get uh, uh, more pieces to the platform from step 31, 115 to 117, 121 and 2, 124, 129 through uh, 131. Now paint the lights silver uh, where the bulbs would be and then I painted those with a chrome pen. So I painted the uh, pipe, my uh, yellow mix and the little pieces attached to the rocket elevator to the platform that were they were painted silver. The stoplight pole was painted silver and the stoplight was black and I used a chrome pen again to highlight the lights and then painted over them with some clear red, clear yellow and green. Now the fire extinguishers were painted red with a black hose and flat aluminum cart and I glued all the parts onto the launch platform and most of them had alignment holes and the others were simply placed on there from uh, pictures on the box art or the instructions. In step 32 we're going to um, remove uh, parts 86 and then 132 through 139 and glue the pipes, the guardrails and the cameras, uh, camera platform to the launch pad. I glued the camera to the camera's platform and then I painted the rails and camera platform and some of the pipes flat aluminum and I painted other pipes dark gray as seen on the box art. I also painted the camera black with some silver highlights. With most of the platform done, we can start cleaning up the rocket parts uh, 1 through 4, 6, 7, and 8 and glue the two halves of the rocket around the engine plate and then glue the engines to the engine plate. The pipe on, goes on the side of the rocket and the nose adapter goes uh, on top of the rocket. Now there's a specific engine that goes in the center uh, of the engine plate, so watch for that. At step 34, gather up the parts for the capsule that's 140 through 146 and remove any imperfections from these parts. Now I'll use some slow setting cement and I glued parts 146, 145 and 144 together and the alignment can be very tricky so set them aside to dry and make sure they uh, dry properly in the right position. Now we're ready for some painting. I painted the rocket and the engines uh, some titanium silver that's X32 and I painted the capsule, the adapter and the interior engines flat black XF1. Next I painted the astronaut flat aluminum and gave him a wash with some black panel wash. I painted the uh, seat uh, flat brown and then painted the capsule boosters titanium silver. Now I painted the uh, top of the capsule a flat red XF7 
and after I had assembled the rocket and it had dried, I placed the decals on it, uh, which are numbers 36 through 41, according to the instructions in box art. And then, after the decals were set, I used some Microsol on that, and they had dried thoroughly, so I coated the rocket with a uh, coat of satin varnish from Vallejo. It's too bad the astronaut in the kit will never be seen again. <laughs> well, in the final step, it asks you to place your rocket uh, on the elevator, but um, without any glue. But uh, it was kind of tipsy, and with it just kind of hanging out there, I decided to glue it into position. Now, that's a choice that you can make uh, yourself. But, there it is. Your model is complete. It's gorgeous, and as you've noticed, most of the construction is in the uh, launch platform itself. It's really an enjoyable kit, and um, even though it's uh, quite an old mold, uh, with a little cleanup, it's pretty impressive. Uh, it's a large kit, as we mentioned earlier, and it would look great just about anywhere. Uh, it's a nice, uh, a nice one for your uh, science exhibit display or or even a, a classroom instruction etc so if I were you I'd buy one and put it on my shelf well we hope you like this premium step-by-step -step model kit review and so that you don't miss any more please subscribe to our YouTube channel you can do that by clicking on the icon in the right lower corner of any of our reviews or you can find us on Facebook or our website right on replicas.com thanks